going on, little dap? It's Jared Bunce. Welcome to Live with SCR and OSA. We're talking soccer balls today and a whole lot more. Welcome to my friend uh, Steve Roberts from FG STR Skill School. Steve, how you doing today? I'm good. What's up, little dap? <laughs> <laughs> little dap, Steve. I tell you what, I feel like I'm in England today. I'm outside looking at a, well, I'm not outside right now, but I'm by a window looking at a rainy, rainy day in Vegas. Typically, it's sunny, sunny here, and now it's all rainy. Awful. Boom. Feel welcome like I'm in England. England, mate. Feel like I'm in England. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the club. What's the weather like for you right now? Uh, awful. I went to film today. Like those, those are my followers that are, or fans that watch my channel. You do rely on the weather being a football channel. So um, we went out today and filmed at a golf club, um, filming with a golf freestyler. Weirdly enough, uh, shout out to uh, Kevin Carpenter. He uh, does some amazing trick shots. And, uh, and he's got loads of good skills, but it was so foggy, and then it started to rain at 12 o'clock, so we, we didn't get much filming time, unfortunately, so uh, that's, that's England for you. <laughs> it's funny, we actually had the same problem today, Steve. It was, it was it? overcast, yeah. perfect lighting for filming. We got out there, we started doing a how to do a back heel tutorial. All of a sudden, the sun came out, and the lighting was terrible, and the next thing you know, it was pouring down raining, so we had to stop. So hopefully we'll get lucky this afternoon, but... Uh, very excited to be on the Hangout here. I know uh, the Sushi Eating Panda on YouTube posted a comment already saying he's excited or she's excited. So if you're watching, just tuning in, be sure and post a comment on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. We're going to be engaging with you throughout the show. The Hangout's an hour. Today we're talking soccer balls. We're talking history of the balls, um, uh, some of the top ten balls, what soccer balls you like, footballs, things like that. So join the conversation. It's going to be fun. But let's start off, Steve, with some big YouTube news. Um, on the YouTube Creator blog today, they announced the new channel design. So for those of you that like making YouTube videos on your channel, be sure to go to youtube.com slash one channel or channel one. I might have messed that one up. But anyway, check that out. to tell you how to set up your new channel and post a video. What do you think about that, Steve? No, that's good. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of people are always worried about YouTube changes, but YouTube did it for a reason. And also, you've uh, you've got you've got to go along with it anyway. But I I think it's quite cool. Like, if there's new people coming to your channel and look at your channel, then uh, like it's a chance for us to showcase our best talent. So the new feature of thirty second uh, sort of promo video that will play to only people that are not subscribed to your channel as soon as they visit. So I think that's quite a cool feature, like to showcase that. And then all your subscribers, uh, when they have a look at your channel, they might see something new. So it's up to you what you put on then. But I think the promo uh, video idea is quite cool. Yeah, I agree. It's really cool. I also like that YouTube made the nice touch of uh, only having the the commercial promo video show up for people that aren't your subscribers. So if a new person comes to your channel, they're going to get that commercial type video and if a regular subscriber that watches your videos all the time comes they're not going to keep getting the same video that they've already seen so very nice touch by YouTube I know I'm certainly excited when the rain stops to get out there and make a video um, speaking of YouTube and big milestones Steve I think you deserve a little dap and a congrats my man you reached 150,000 subscribers the other day how's it feel oh yeah it's, oh, it's always overwhelming I like I'm very humbled like Sort of cheers, man. I, I really like, like, love the fact that you know I've, I've got people watching my videos and and they love to you know want to watch more. That's what the subscribers are all about. So um, yeah, 150,000 subs. Yeah, it's a great milestone. I mean, I've set my bar high now for a million subscribers, but uh, I'm just going to keep plugging away, plugging away uh, every step at a time. But uh, it's looking good so far. Yeah, nice one. Well, congrats and. Uh... I was gonna. I was gonna say. You know how, like, if you were a pro soccer player and you were playing in front of 150,000 people, you'd have this like massive adrenaline rush. But when you're releasing videos, you're kind of like, well, now we have a million hits, but I don't really feel the crazy rush. It's pretty neat, I'm sure, for you. Like now that you're releasing videos and traffic's just flooding to them right away, it must yeah, be a cool yeah. feeling. Yeah, I think like like I said, what I, you know what I'm more overwhelmed about is like where the videos outreach to. All right, like you know we're we're English speaking, but there's a lot of non-English speaking countries that watch my you know videos. I think I was quite fortunate with the format of my tutorials that I, I gained those subscribers through not talking. But actually, I'm being encouraged to talk more in my videos by you know people from Malaysia or India and those types of countries and. Um, like I said, my, my, 
you know, going by my most viewed, my most viewed is the USA. Like, I know my most viewed is the USA. Uh, second is the UK and third is Malaysia. So, uh, in the comments, just let me know if you watch my videos and where you're from, and uh, we'll give you a shout out. Yeah, nice one. Well, let's give a shout out to a YouTuber Asan Ka. He's asking, "Hey, mate, will this be Q and A?" And yes, it will be Q and A. So, if you have a comment, post it on Twitter. Or the YouTube comments update automatically for us, and we can see that. So, we we will be giving shout outs and answering questions in the comments. But let's get into the show, Steve. Um, Actually, one last thing before we get into the show. Uh, on Steve's channel this week, he had me do a guest video, an online soccer academy video on SDR Skill School. If you haven't checked it out, go watch it. I do this like flick up, knee smash down tutorial. We don't quite have a name for it, so comment on the video, give us a name. But thank you very much for Steve for having me. So let's talk, right. about, so let's talk about soccer ball, Steve. What? Real quick, go ahead and give us the history of a soccer ball. Do you know the answer? Do you know what? Off the top of my head, I don't, but I'm sure you've got uh, something from the Bleacher Report there, haven't you, Jared? <laughs> well, I believe I assigned you the homework to do some research, and I didn't see anything in the Google Drive document with some research. So, <laughs> BleacherReport.com, since Steve did not but, do his homework. By the turn homework. of the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Football started to become mass produced. <laughs> Do not read my homework, Steve. All right. So what I, happened is, <laughs> all right. So according to Bleacher Report, one of the first rubber vulcanized rubber soccer balls was produced by a guy named Charles Goodyear in 1855. Steve, were you around back then? Yeah, in spirit, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I heard the crickets on that one. Bad joke. Bad joke. I'm still, um, I'm still struggling about this research, mate. Bad just joke. With me. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So anyway, Charles Goodyear, he he designed uh, the he he had a patent for this ru a vulcanized rubber soccer ball. Came 11 years uh, after he got the the patent on the process to to vulcanize rubber, whatever that means. 11 years later, he invented this first soccer ball. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show you a screenshot of that. Give me one sec, and we'll show you what the 1855 soccer ball looks like. Tell you what, it looks looks a little bit like this ball right here. Um, but let me go ahead and grab the screenshot real fast. In a second. Oh, here we go. Coming up. Uh, oh, this one. All right, one sec. Here comes the screenshot. Start screen share. A little bit slow. Apologize for the delay. It's pretty cool, this technology, how it works. All right, let's see. So we can see my screen here. Um, does everyone see this rubber soccer ball right here? Look at that old thing. I don't think I don't know how they blew them up back then, if they had air pumps or what, but that's the ball from 1855 by Charles Goodyear. Love to see that one move through a knuckleball. Think Ronaldo could hit it? Post a comment and let us know if you think Ronaldo could hit a knuckleball with that old thing. Normally they'll break the feet, wouldn't they? With those old things. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that would work. All right, so enough of that screen sharing. Um, since Steve didn't do his hangout, let's give a shout out to Juan Martinez. Uh, he says, "Believe in it, cool hangout guys." Um, YouTuber T S U S A Jop. I think if this was delayed a few hours, you would have a lot more viewers. I agree with you that, but it's a live video. It comes out after it's live. It can be recorded, and people come back to it. Um, YouTuber Omed Omed 99 that's one ugly soccer ball, LOL. I agree, that rubber ball does not look very nice. What do you think actually, about it, Steve? But actually, they, they, they get worse. Like, if you, if you have a look. So we've got uh, the, Wait, the you... rubber ball. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look great. It looks like a bit like a beach ball. But then, uh, then when the, they, they, they moved to the uh, lever balls, uh, so the first World Cup final in 1930, use a lever a leather soccer ball. You keep saying soccer. It's football. <laughs> um, uh, the leather ball was supplied by Uruguay, uh, which won the first World Cup title. Um, I'm reading this off the Bleacher Report's uh, <laughs> all right, website. All right, well, so yeah. shout out to the Bleacher Report. Um, but yeah, the, the, the old leather footballs uh, back in the day were very heavy, uh, normally made of a pig's bladder. So that's that's kind of knowledge that I, I know about. And uh, uh, they were also laced up. So, so to uh, with the bladders, they used to kind of replace the bladders um, if they popped uh, by untying the ball, and then you know they could they could change them. 
So nowadays, when your balls burst, you can't you can't change them. So back then, they used to do that. Um, but also, uh, we'll look over the years. The panelling will change too. So um, I'm guessing by the ball I'm looking at from the 1930s has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve panels, twelve long stripped panels on it. I'm impressed you can count to 12, Steve. You haven't been doing your homework, but good thing your math is quality. Yeah, I could have counted in twos, to be fair. Speaking, speaking <laughs> of counting, speaking of counting how, many, how many footballs do you have back there, and, and what, uh, what ball are you currently using? What's your favorite ball? Okay, so um, I don't know if you're getting a good angle here. Um, the Mitre Ultimax football here is actually logo, so it's got my logo on it. I'm a little bit worried I'm... If I move a football, they're all going to fall down. <laughs> it's like grabbing an apple at the grocery store and then seeing them all tumble down That's and it. embarrass yourself. That's it. So, so this is the current ball. The, the original design of this, back in 1992, uh, was used in the Premier League, uh, the English Premier League. So Mitre used to make the footballs for the English Premier League, and it was the actual the Ultimax football. So it's a really nice football. So this, this match ball is a high-quality match ball, uh, size 5, and it's got the STR logo on it. Nice. STR was around in 92? No, but they uh, reproduced it. It's a different design. Like my... <laughs> if you, uh... <laughs> Easy, Steve. Relax over there, buddy. Just winding you up. <laughs> oh, no, I know you are. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm restricted to what I can say. <laughs> Live on air, right? <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, the original, the original ball did not have an STR logo, and it, but it also had like a V-shaped mitre symbol, so you might recognise that, and it also had the Premier League logo on. So nice one. So uh, so that's the ball you're currently using right now. Post a yeah, comment if you're watching. All right, sorry, Steve. Put, uh, for everyone sorry. watching right now, be sure and post a comment. Let us know what ball you're currently using right now: Adidas, Nike, uh, Puma, Umbro. Miter, you know, post the comments. Let let us know what you're using. This is my ball, Steve. I also have a lot of other soccer balls, footballs. Um, everyone's always like, "Why don't you get a new ball? Why don't you get a new ball?" I use this ball in the videos because I'm trying to prove you don't need the nicest stuff in the world to practice on your own. Having said that, I've also grown this really weird uh, attachment to this ball, like uh, Tom Tom Hanks in uh, Castaway. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you think I should name this ball, please post a comment and let us know what you think the name of this ball is. One time someone was commenting on a YouTube video and they were saying, Steve, that uh, is that the new Adidas uh, peeled skin World Cup ball that they're going to use in 2014? I thought that was genius, by the way. I've submitted my proposal to Adidas to get the peeled skin technology approved. I haven't heard back from anybody yet. But <laughs> Crazy air resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy air resistance. Um, YouTuber Phoenix324 says he uses the Adidas F50X-LT. Um, that sounds nice. I like it. And we've got uh, YouTuber Omed, Omed99. That would be O-M-A-I-D uh, twice, 99. He uses the NCAA ball. I love the NCAA ball, by the way. Classic. Steve, I don't know if you know, but NCAA, no, that. that's uh, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, so all the college soccer in America, uh, they play with these NCAA balls. I think they're made by Brine, B-R-I-N-E, and it is an awesome ball. I mean, you hit it, it just flies off your foot. You know that feeling when you smoke a ball and it's just, it's just perfect, and if you were hitting a plasticky one, it would not go the same way? Mm. Yeah, 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 here, yeah. Uh, just, can I just give a shout out to a coach in Manual UK? Uh, left a comment, uh, said about, uh, was waiting for Steve to drop the pig's bladder knowledge. So, uh, big <laughs> up to them. But they're, they're actually good friends of mine. They've got a really good website. So, check it out um, if you've never, you've never seen their stuff. So, um, it's cool what they do. So, if you've ever heard of the coaching manual, um, you'll know what they do. But if not, go and check them out. Nice. Here's what I do. We I say we take a second. Let's go to my friends at soccer.com. We're going to do a screen share. We're going to look at some of the balls on the market right now, and we'll just go through them and, and talk about them quickly, colors, design, brands, things like that. All right, so we're coming up. Starting the screen share. Let it roll through. Here we go. Screen share on. All right, so, Steve, you seeing the screen right now while I'm going through? Nice. All right. Nice one. Okay, so 
Got a, you can buy, holy smokes, can you imagine buying a 24-pack of, of footballs? That would be awesome. This one right here in the corner. Talk <laughs> about Christmas. Um, I think, I think, think I've bought 10 at the most at once. <laughs> nice. What do you think about this Nike Catalyst ball right here? A little bit of gold in it. What do you think? Yeah, that's the old style, isn't it? They, um, uh, I think when Nike first, <laughs> Nike, Nike first took over the... Um, the, the Premier League, you know, the Premier League with their footballs, that was the type of ball they're having. So that's quite an old style, actually. I'm surprised they still got it on there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe soccer.com hasn't removed it yet, but I really yeah. like the. Uh, but the I quite panel, like it. I like it. Yeah, I like the, the style. paneling on that one. You, like you just looking at it, it looks like you could hit that ball really nice. It's nice and smooth. Uh, it's kind of got that volleyball sort of texture too. Um, let's go to the next one. Adidas Finale Wembley Top Training Ball. I've got Ooh, one of them. I've got one of them. Uh, do you know what? If I, someone just sh show my screen quickly. Oh, Steve, come on! It's going to take an uh, hour to uh, unshare uh, the uh, screen. Uh, you're uh, gonna, you're uh, really, uh, really right, pushing we'll my limits. I got 50 we'll, pieces we'll of technology going here. We're trying to keep the stream going good. Um, <laughs> comments are flying in. Let's let's give a shout out to a comment or two for a second. Uh, That's all right, mate. YouTube, YouTuber LW videos 14 uses the Nike 2004-2005 EPL style ball. Uh, YouTuber David RJ Beckham 23, related to David Beckham, obviously, uses the Nike Vault and also Adidas World Cup 2006. Um, all right, let's go back to the screen. Uh, yeah, man, look, really, I just want to talk about that football, by the way. That, that, the, uh, the Wembley, the Wembley training? All right, it's back on the yeah, screen. Yeah, so that's, that's the top, I think that's the top replica ball. So it's not the official ball, because the official ball yeah. is about 90, like 90 pounds English money, so that must be mm -hmm. quite a lot of dollars. But it's about 20 pound uh, English money. Uh, it's the new ball for the Champions League final, so it's... Uh, um, it's all about Wembley Stadium, so it's got all the graphics yeah. on there from, uh, is it uh, something like 50 years, is it? or I, uh, I can't 1963 quite. to 2013, I believe the math on that is 50 years. If it's cool. not, right. someone make fun of us in the comments. <laughs> so yeah, it's my, it's my mouse anyway. So, so um, yeah, that ball was actually glued rather than stitched, and um, it is actually a top... Um, preferred ball for football freestylers. Oh, really? Um, inside knowledge is that they prefer that ball to any, like, well, some football freestylers because it's got, it's very grippy, that ball in particular, not mm -hmm. the, the main ball, but the, the replica ball, that, that exact ball you're seeing on the on the screen now. Mm -hmm. um, but when we come back to me in a minute, I'll show you one that I've been working with yeah. and they do feel really nice to juggle. Um, another little tip is they're not fully inflated. Because when they are fully inflated, they're at, they're actually rock hard, and they do hurt. Like, do yeah. hurt if you're trying to if you're trying to hit them hard. But um, they have them like slightly dis deflated, but they're a really nice ball to juggle. Mm -hmm. um, nice. We'll like have them. we'll have to give a shout out to uh, John Farm Farnworth and uh, Billy Wingrove and Jeremy, the F2 freestylers, and ask them what they think about the ball. Um, yeah. Side no, note. From side note, Steve. I'm very excited. Uh, bowl, all three of those guys. Um, John Farnworth, Billy, and Jeremy from F2 Freestylers uh, are going to be juggling in our OSA World Jugglathon for nothing but nets on April 25th. Uh, you can participate awesome. anywhere in the world you have a ball. So I'm super pumped to have those guys uh, making videos to promote the Jugglathon on the April 25th. All right, let's move on to the next ball. Uh, before I do that, we'll give a shout out um, YouTuber. Uh, YouTuber, the in football, all about the African Cup of Nations ball. Some were cool. All right, nice one. Let's go back to I'm trying to find. A, I'm trying to find a good. Oh, here we go. The Nike Saber Premier League ball. Yeah, nice ball. Very nice ball. I like that yellow one. You can play in the dark. All right, let's go to page two, and then we'll see what else is here, and we'll uh, we'll move on from the ball sharing. All right. All right, let's see what we got. The Adidas UEFA Euro 2012 replica ball. Yeah, hidden hidden, hidden among, amongst all my footballs is one of them as well, but mine's the replica mine's the replica one. Actually, that one on screen is also a replica because if yeah. you look at the paneling, if you look at the paneling, it's got um lots of um sort of small panels on the ball, yeah. like um, hexagons and, and pentagon shapes, um, whereas the the uh, 
the actual ball that they used for the Euros was uh, again a glued a glued ball, but it had less panels on it. So mm -hmm. um, you know, yes. a lot of people didn't like the Jabulani ball, which is the World Cup 2010 ball. Uh, they mm -hmm. did make that and changed it, but again, I've I've used one of them fully inflated again, and they just they just don't feel right. Like there's something yeah. about them that just don't feel right. Um, they are lovely well, footballs, but yeah. Well, hopefully you're not talking about the one on screen now. This beautiful orange color. Oh, I love me some orange. <laughs> love me some orange. All right. Well, let's unshare the screen and get back to your beautiful face over there, Stevie boy. Unshare the screen. Um, I'm talking about my face. Uh, you YouTuber T S U S A <laughs> Jop says Jerry is the Jeremy is the man. He's referring to uh, the, one of the F two freestylers, I believe. Um, yeah. All right, Steve. Why don't you show us one of those uh, one of those footballs you got in the background there? You were so desperately yeah, so, uh, trying to show us. Well, no, I just thought it was relevant. <laughs> but obviously, it's crazy. Crazy. Come on, relax. <laughs> yeah, but look, I didn't think the Americans had good sense of humor like that. So I'm not. <laughs> Steve, I I learned good sense of humor when I was in college. Right. I, I had all English teammates. I didn't have a clue what was going on, why I was being made fun of so much, but. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that that translated to I was bullied quite a bit in my first year. <laughs> I was. I think I held the record for uh, most personal embarrassing things to go on the wall, and thankfully there was no social media or Facebook back then. Um, <laughs> it was it was good times. All right, so show us one of your. Favorites. I'm not going to move this ball because it's it looks like it's uh, it's supporting all the other ones. There's there's the. Uh, there's the champ. This actually last season's um, Adidas finale top training ball. So again, it's glued stitch like the the main one, but it's it's got a kind of a stickier feel. So that that was the ball that um, we were talking about. Yeah. Well, speaking of speaking of footballs, I believe you're doing a giveaway right now, Steve. Um, yeah. So yeah. Why, why don't you tell everyone who's watching how they can be entered right now? And Steve's going to announce the winner of his uh, football giveaway at the end of the show. Okay, so we've got uh, the the lovely uh, Mitre uh, STR Ultimax that wasn't around back in 1992. Um, it's it's the ball, like I said, I was given and um, printed specially made for me. Um, Mitre have been very kind um, to provide this. So all you need to do, um, as you're watching this live stream, it's a Google Plus live stream, um, and it's it, it goes straight to our YouTube channel. If if you've got a YouTube account or a a G Gmail account. It's really, it's really easy. Um, Jared, you, am I actually showing up on screen? By the way, I know I've stopped halfway through, but am I showing oh, up? Cause sorry, sorry. Just uh, see. Yeah, it was. Um, sorry, it was locked for some reason from the screen share. It's frozen. It's frozen on yours. Am I back on? Yeah, you're on now. Sorry about that. Steve. Okay, okay, that's all right. That's all right. So um, with the uh, the the STR uh, might um, uh, match ball, you can win that by going to Google Plus. Um, as I said, if you've got a Gmail account or a um, YouTube account, it's easy to set up. So go to Google Plus, uh, follow STR Skill School on there, and basically, if you follow me, um, you've got a chance of winning one of these. And they're not they're not cheap either. They're about um, they retail about fifty sixty pound. Like nice, it's a good contest, Steve. I've always I've already created about fifty uh, spam accounts and followed Steve on all of them to <laughs> increase my chances of winning that lovely ball. Because as you've seen. My ball is looking a little old, even though I love it. Um, YouTuber Randy Kular uh, is asking, what is Steve's channel name? SDR Skill School on Google+. Plus. He's also YouTube.com slash SDR Skill School. Let's give a shout-out to YouTuber 01277-6547939. Niner. I just added in that Niner. Anyway, <laughs> he just said, hey, a little dab to you. Um, YouTuber That Trick Shot Guy says, talk about boots, exclamation point. Uh, we are not talking about boots on this show. We talked about boots last show. This show, we're talking footballs. Uh, we try to have a little bit of a theme every show, um, but good, good one. Go back and watch the last two weeks ago show, and you can see that. Um, that was so on my what, channel, wasn't it? Was yeah, that, right? that, was, that was on Steve's yeah. channel. So once again, if you want to be entered in the contest, go follow Google Plus One, Steve's Google Plus page, You'll be entered in, and at the end of the show, we're going to announce the winner for that football live. That's cool. If they just go to google.com forward slash plus uh, STR Skill School, that would take them straight there. All right. Um, so let's let's talk about let's talk about footballs that move a lot. So there's always a lot of controversy, 
come come World Cup time, uh, typically Adidas comes out with a new ball. All the players love it because it moves like crazy. Keepers hate it. What do you think? Do you like balls that move a lot? Do you like footballs that have more of a natural movement in the air to them? And should we even consider goalies' feelings here? Do we even care about them? Nah, I'm just kidding. But do we consider it? Post a comment. <laughs> let us know what you think. Um, Steve, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, do you know what? I, I love a football that I know whatever I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to kick it in a certain way, I want it to travel in that direction. So I want to be able to manipulate the ball well, as in if I want to curl the ball, you know, I want that swerve to be true. Like I said, uh, you know, norm normally if you're just hitting the ball in a certain way, it, it will go that way. But the Jabulani was a ball that just didn't, just didn't work for a lot of people. But then again, Diego Fal Forlan completely mastered it. Yeah. So there's no no excuse. But as I said, like Ronaldo can do his trademark free kicks. Um, you know, all the other players that were trying, you know, trying different things like long balls and crosses and stuff. It just didn't work. Like, yeah, I don't I don't, I don't know what was up with that ball, but it, it was a bit of a fail. You, YouTuber uh, Phoenix three two four is asking, what is nat natural movement? So let's just explain this here. Typically, you hit a ball and it just moves very straight. That is, that's its natural movement. Lots of times, some of these newer balls. When you kick them straight, they do this type of motion as they're coming at the goalie. So they think they're coming at him, and all of a sudden it veers to the right, uh, like it's on a remote control. So that's the unnatural movement. And um, I, I personally, I think it's awesome. It's definitely a lot of fun to hit a ball that has that type of movement on it. Um, I always find it funny when goalies are interviewed, like men's national team goalie Tim Howard. He, he pretty much says he's like, well, I definitely don't like them, but no one really cares what I think, so we just have to play with these anyway. It's always funny. Um, YouTuber Shot Science uh, says, but what about basketballs? Uh, he's a he's a basketball YouTuber. If you want to learn how to play basketball, go check out YouTube. Hey, sh yeah, Science. shout out to Shot, Shot Science. Science. Uh, every so often I like to kick a basketball, but they, they don't move the way footballs do. Um, so everyone, uh, let's see. Jared, I'll just go, while you're looking through there quickly, I'll just I'll just mention that I think like with the panelling on the footballs as well, the the less panels you've got, the more movement you have as well. So if you've got lots of seams, um, let me let me carefully <laughs> this one. <laughs> so this is a Nike ball. This is a traditional looking soccer ball. I like soccer ball, football. Um, <laughs> as I said, this is like your traditional pattern, um, and even like with the mitre. I think there was something like 32 panels on a ball like this. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously different, but um, that would that would have like a, what I say, pretty pretty true flight um, on how it moves. But um, certainly with the Jabulani, it was pretty much seamless. There was no there was no panels. Yeah. So that's why uh, I think that's why there was a big struggle with it. Speaking of the the Jabulani, Jabulani uh, YouTuber Tan LFC. Seven says, "I love a ball that moves." For example, the Jabulani that hey that they used in the World Cup in 2012. Yeah, that was that was a fun ball. Um, so, what uh ne next thing we need to show is uh so bleach back to the Bleacher Report. They did yeah. the coolest soccer balls in history. Um, so what do you think about doing a screen share, Steve? And we go through this list. Um. And see what I thought you were going to test me on my uh, my knowledge of my history of my football. No, no, no. I looked at some of these and I'm like, I don't know did, where Bleacher did you know? is getting their information did you, from. But let's... Did you know the first, the first synthetic ball was in 1986 and it was the Adidas Azteca football, which uh, Maradona famously scored the, the hand of God and the greatest girl in the world ever against England in the same game. So uh, that was the first ever synthetic football. Nice. And there it is. Random facts of information from SDR Skill School. All right. Next, let's uh, <laughs> let's go with the, the screen share and we'll do the bleacher report. All right. Lock in the screen here. Give it a second. Let's start off with old Charles Goodyear. And speaking of random facts of knowledge, um, Charles Goodyear is – he didn't invent Goodyear tires, um, but a few generations – I think it was four decades after – he passed away back in the 18-something um, is when they created Goodyear tires based around his name since he invented that technology that 
obviously made Goodyear a very successful company. Um, so, Steve, how are we looking? Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see the screen. Oh, yeah, um, you're talking about my useless knowledge and facts. Yeah, thanks for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that, I thought that was pretty interesting. The poor guy invents an old, deflated rubber Come on, soccer football. Come on, get on with it. Get on and, with then, it. and then all of a sudden, his company is like a billion-dollar company that he didn't get a hand in. I sure was rolling <laughs> it over in his grave for that one. All right, so we'll start with the 3 of 12. Oh, my goodness. This is from the 1930 that, World Cup Museum. Oh, yeah, where did that fact range. come from? We're, we're on the 10 coolest soccer ball, 10 coolest soccer balls in soccer history on bleacherreport.com. So we're going to go through these, and everyone give us like a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a plus minus in the YouTube comments. Um, all right. What do you think, Steve? Plus or minus on this old ball? Cool, not mm, cool? I'm going to say, as it was the, the start of football pretty much, I'm going to say it's cool because it, it's not something I want to play with now, but yeah. it's history, so it's cool. It looks like if I was snorkeling in Key West and I found that below some coral reefs, I would be so excited. Well, if you look That's at the, uh, if you look, if, sorry, if you looked at the uh, the holes on it, that was where they laced the ball up. So, <laughs> oh, nice. That's pretty. That's vintage right there. Mm. Quality. All right, YouTuber LW Videos fourteen gives it a plus because it's the original. All right, next ball here we got the Adidas Azteca from Mexico. Where did I get that information from? It was the official ball of 1986 World Cup in Mexico. What, what do you mean? It's right here on the screen. Yeah, I know. I've already mentioned it. When? In, in the, those who are watching the Hangout, have I already mentioned that ball or not? Wait, in the past 30 seconds or like in the beginning of the show? Past, past minute or so. Oh, sorry about that, Steve. You, you said I had a useless bit of information. And if you look, read carefully, it says it was the first synthetic ball. Oh, that was the one. Sorry, man. I'm in the zone here. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to keep up. I'm sitting. Knock on wood. The whole Google Plusing is working. Comments are flying in. You know. Now you're throwing me off and I accidentally just opened a new tab. Oh my god. There it is. There's the comments back again. Um, YouTuber, Omad Omad ninety nine. That this one's definitely a plus. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah. Plus the Azteca. I love that football. Ooh, by the way. number seven. The Adidas Santiago. Uh, this is the official ball of the 1962 World Cup in Chile. What do you think, Steve? Plus, minus? Mm, I'm going to say it's, it's different, but I'm going to go minus. It's not my favorite. I love the Azteca. Yeah, that Azteca one looks look nice. Um, all right, I will give it... I will give it a minus because it kind of reminds me of like an old leathery couch that you may not want to sit on. All right, next. Ooh, the Nike Brazil ball. This ball isn't historic. It didn't break any tech, technological ground. That's what Bleacher Report says. I think it's a poor bit of research by Bleacher Report, to be fair. So <sighs> I, I, don't, I don't know why that ball's in there. Like, there's, yeah. there's so many better balls that could have been this top 10. Me, me neither. It looks like a dollar giveaway ball for, for something random. Uh, yeah. All right, next. The logo's not even the real logo. Nah, it's probably a ripoff ball. It's probably someone just, you know how they do like, well, not that I know much about purses, but you know how they have those like really nice <laughs> Gucci, <laughs> Gucci purses, and then you go to New York and you buy one on the corner somewhere for like 20 bucks and no one really knows the difference, but that ball, you could tell the difference. All right, number five out of the top 10 coolest balls is the Miter Delta 1000. This ball oh, was shout out to Miter. Shout out to Miter. This ball was used in the English First Division in the 80s and 90s. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, great, Plus, great minus. ball. Love, I love the Mighty Delta. And as a kid, I wanted a Mighty Delta Cosmic, and a Mighty Delta Cosmic was a, a an unreal ball. Like that, that was the ball I wanted, and um, I dreamt about. Like I dreamt about having this football. But the Mighty Delta, and you see those, like I said about those um, sort of like arrowhead sort of um, um, sort of they're not triangles, are they? They're like a V shape um, yeah. design. That that was so that was so uh, like st such a standout design for Mitre. Um, they've sort of replaced it now, like you saw earlier from the ball that I had. But but yeah, the Mitre Delta was an, an amazing football. So thumbs up to that. Yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs up too. I like that one a lot. It looks like an awesome ball, even in the '90s, um, for that type of technology. Really cool. Thumbs up. 
Let's give a uh, YouTuber, David RJ Beckham 23, says the miter is sick in my opinion. Um, let's see, uh, YouTuber Mr. Papermaster01, interesting username, uh, loves the color of that Nike Brazil ball. All right, let's move on to the next one. Ooh, another miter. Oh, uh, that's, the ball, that's the ball I was talking about. That's just gets better here, about. Steve. We got number four on the list, the Miter Ultimax, uh, succeeded the Delta 1000 in the late 90s. And, the, and it says it was better in every way. It had an updated design and used microfiber technology. Thumbs up or thumbs down, Steve? Yeah, thumbs up. That's the ball that everyone can win, by the way. Miter, Miter Ultimax. But it's, my, mine's got a different design on it, but it's exactly the same ball. Nice, yeah, nice. Thumbs up. I'm going to give it a thumbs. I'm going to give it a thumbs up too. Number four. All right, let's go on to the next one. Number three, the Adidas Jubilani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, according to Bleacher Report, the players hated it, but this ball is very cool. Designed for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Plus or minus? What do we think, Steve? Uh, for me, for me, it, it, like, I agree with what they say. With It's quite a cool technology, but actually it didn't work. They've, they've ruined something, so it's a thumbs down. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. All right, I'm going to give it... Or oh, minus. I'm going to give it... <laughs> I'm going to give it a thumbs down, too, because a lot of my friends weren't really big fans of that ball. Um, so I'm going to give it a thumbs down. A little too much movement on it. Um, let's go to the number two, the Adidas Telstar. Um, it says, forget about that technology. This is the classic look for a soccer ball. The Telstar was used for the 1970 and, and 74 World Cups and was surpassed in coolness by only one ball. Dot, 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 which will be our next one. What do you think, Steve? Uh, uh, this is what symbolizes our football for me. Um, yeah, 1970, 1974, um, classic. You know, 1974 with the, the, the Dutch, uh, Johan Cruyff yeah, with the Holland teams. Um, this is the football that symbolizes that era, and I would say this is a massive thumbs up for me. I love that design. Yeah, I'd love I'll to get it. hold of one of those. I'll give it a thumbs up too. Adidas loves that original style. Look at the marketing back then, though. I love how it just says like, "Bam!" Official World Cup Mexico, 1970. They don't even mess around. They're like, "We're going to tell you exactly what this is right on the ball." Um, let's uh, let's give a shout out to uh, <laughs> so a YouTuber LW Videos 14 says about the Jubilani. We sometimes use the Jubilani in our matches, and they always end up in the car park. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that's, a funny, that's a funny one. I used to, I don't know about you guys growing up, Steve, and I'm not saying anyone should do this, but we used to crush the balls over the goal every so often and try to hit cars that were going by when we were practicing. Not appropriate <laughs> by any means, but it was funny back then. If you've got good target practice. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, let's go to the number one. Let's go to the number one ball here. Ooh, drum roll. No Ooh. <laughs> that was. I, had a, I can't even do a drum roll right now. I don't know what's going on. Um, number one, the Adidas Tango Espana. Uh, the Espana was the official ball in the 1982 World Cup in Spain. 82 is a great year, by the way. Um, yeah, it's a good year. That was my birthday year. Uh, this, was, this was the last World Cup to ball to be made of genuine leather. Thumbs up or thumbs down, Steve? Uh, massive thumbs up. The Tango, uh, I mean, the Tango Espana has obviously got a slightly different design with the red, um, you know, with the red letter in the logos, but um, that that is iconic. The Tango, you know, the, tan uh, the Tango paneling and the design, and even now they brought back the Tango 12 um, for the, the Euros last year, and, um, you know, they they adapted it slightly but yeah massive thumbs up for the tango I do you know with 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 um, the Adidas balls there you know they are amazing like normally amazing match balls um, but those old iconic match balls were unreal especially like the tango the Telsar the Azteca you know especially growing up as a kid seeing those on the telly like amazing amazing footballs and especially the tango yeah I'm gonna give it a thumbs up too everyone loves a good tango Especially in Adidas Tango, um, you've, you've been ta you've been tangoed. 
<laughs> you do, you know, know. do you know what that, do you know what that means, no, Jared? No, <laughs> I don't. I hope it wasn't. A, what, did you just no, put like, one the, of those YouTube no, masks the, on the, here? Are we getting silly any, any, any English people on here, uh, they'll know what I'm talking about. There was, there's a drink called Tango. It's bright orange. And and there was like adverts for people with orange faces and skin, and they said you've been tangoed. Yeah. So Jared's Jared's been tangoed. Here's my here's my orange tango drink. It's just water. It's just water in here. Someone said <laughs> it was hot cocoa. It's just water. I already had a cup of coffee this morning. Um, you've been tangoed. <laughs> uh, YouTuber G, uh, G, G his mask G H I S M E I S K. That tango looks amazing. Um, YouTuber Packers Badgers CFC. I like the Addy Pure Ball. Um, let's answer a question, um, which I think is an interesting question from YouTuber Phoenix three two four. Hey, when you guys have time, can you talk about a match ball versus replicas? Why do replicas cost so much less than a match ball? Steve. Yeah, um, you, you do. You do know. You do notice a big difference between the two, especially sometimes in the uh, the, the quality of how they're made. Um, I know in the past when I've used a, a, a replica night ball um, as opposed to the the actual match ball that that you can buy. Uh, one, obviously, there's normally about a fifty pound difference in price, but then two. The replicas don't kind of last you as long, you know. They're they're good balls, you know. If you if you make sure you look after them and don't use them on concrete and stuff, they're gonna, you know, all footballs are gonna pr pretty much be fine. But I don't know. I don't. I don't think that it's probably worth us buying them for recreational use. You know, uh, I think if you're buying a match ball that you're gonna, you know, once you've used it, you keep it somewhere safe and. You know, you look after it. It's going to last you a very long time. Um, you know, you, and you and you do feel a difference. If I was going to use mitre balls for an example, mitre have a range of training balls, and not they don't necessarily have the replica type ball, but they have, you know, they have different grades of football. So you can buy a cheaper training ball, um, but they probably don't have as much cushioning on the foot um, when you use them. Um, and then they do match balls all the way up until the you know, the, the top match balls. But I will say, you do notice a big difference between their best ball and their cheaper ball. Yeah. Um, you know, a big difference. Um, but you can't go wrong with a £20 football. I don't know how that relates to your, your price, but I think if you're going to spend about £20 on a ball, it's going to be fairly decent. So that you, I would, you know... If you're not sure, don't go for a top end match ball because it's yeah, it's probably a waste of money. I, I would say um, you know the biggest reason you know the match balls are more expensive because they're using uh, better materials, better technology, better everything, and then the replica balls just they don't use quite as good materials because they're trying to bring the price down for a lot of people that can't afford the super expensive match ball, um, which is it's actually really considerate of the big brands to do that. You know they sell the higher end ball, but then they also make a, a ball that most people can afford. I would say if you're looking at buying uh, match balls versus replicas, talk to your folks, uh, find out what your budget is for training balls. Let's say you have fifty dollars to spend or a hundred dollars to spend. Maybe it's best to buy, you know, five or six footballs with that money versus one really good one. That way you've got extra balls for shooting, training, doing all that. You're not chasing one football every time. Plus, the reality is, you're gonna lose a football. Um, so it's always good to have extra ones. Steve, there's something I want to talk about because I'm, I'm always recommending players to use a mini ball. So I've got a mini ball right here, a size yeah, nice. one a size one ball. Snap. Nice one, nice snap. one Steve. Oh, snap. All right, we got, we got the mini balls here. So why would you use a mini ball? Um, Steve, I'll let you go ahead, and then I'll give my reasoning. A um, couple of reasons. Um... You, know, you can fine tune your motor skills by using uh, a smaller football. Uh, I think if you were practicing your tri uh, your dribbling, um, you know, getting your coordination, working with a smaller ball, um, you know, different touches. Also, uh, when you juggle, um, you know, do keep your uppies with a, a smaller ball. You know, again, when you use a bigger ball, it's going to be much easier. So, you know, that's the benefits to using a small ball. Yeah, I would. I would. Real, pretty much the same thing with Steve. When, when I was when I was playing, um, I would use a mini ball 15, 20 minutes every day before my training sessions, either by myself or with my team, and getting a feel for this ball, doing tricks, doing dribbling, doing moves, taking shots, hitting volleys, 
And then after 20 minutes, I would move to the big ball, and it made a massive difference in my ball control and touch. So I highly recommend you make an investment and get a mini ball, size one ball, and use it every day that you're training, 15, 20 minutes, and it'll make a big difference in your game. Um, and then to counter that uh, comment, Steve, about mini balls, lots of players will be like, well, what about a tennis ball? What about a hacky sack? Does that count the same? I highly recommend using a mini ball versus a hacky sack and a tennis ball because, one, a hacky sack moves a whole lot different than a football does. So that's not really going to be great for your style on the field with a normal ball. And then also a tennis ball, it feels different. It moves different. This size one ball here feels exactly like your size four and size five balls. I'm going to go back to our good friend Paul Gascoigne, um, Jared. Um, Paul Gascoigne actually, um, before the age of seven years old, didn't didn't own his own football, um, and all he was allowed to play with was a tennis ball. Um, but then, then again, they didn't actually produce the mini footballs back then. Yeah. So he used to use a tennis ball and kick it against the wall. And he said, by the time he was given a proper football, his ball control was unreal mm. for a, you know for a seven year old. But you know, he was one of the greatest. Uh, well, most skillful English players of all time. So, you know, it obviously helped him somewhat. But I know oh. there's a lot of people in our era when we were a lot younger used to use those. But when mini balls came about, they were the greatest thing ever. And I don't know if you remember, Jared, the uh, um, World Cup 1992. Um, it was the Itali uh, 92. Italian 90, sorry, 1990. Um, Coca-Cola started producing these mini balls, the first mini balls and on my channel somewhere I've, I'm showing some old you know, old um, merchandise that I had when I was a kid and uh, I should have found them in my garage, they're in my garage somewhere but it's an old red and white Coca-Cola mini ball so back when I was eight years old then I started using those so I used them back then. Nice one. Yeah and just back to your Gascoigne comment with the tennis ball, don't get me wrong, I mean if you have to use a tennis ball, that's all you got, use it. It'll definitely help. I just think for the closest feel you're going to get to a football is going to be using the size one versus a tennis ball. But I used to juggle with tennis balls, and clearly I did. <laughs> can do some tricks. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, man. Now, yeah, I'm just teasing. Uh, YouTuber, YouTuber Side Fries, beautiful, beautiful YouTube username, by the way. Uh, where can you buy size one balls in stores in the U.S.? Hashtag OSA, hashtag SDR, hashtag Barca. Nice one. Um, there's all kinds of websites where you can buy size one balls. Uh, most of them, uh, physical stores, also have size one balls. If you go to onlinesocceracademy.com and click on our shop link, uh, it'll take you to soccer.com, and there you can buy size one balls too. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I, the class is a mini ball. I guess if you look on the websites, it will either say size one or mini ball. Yeah, yes. Check that out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I highly invent, uh, recommend you ask your parents for one of those. It'll make a big difference. Um, YouTuber TK5747 says he got a mini ball for $2 online a few days ago. That's pretty cheap. Uh, yeah, they, they, don't cost too, they don't cost too much. They don't cost yeah. too much. You can pick them up cheap. Yeah, nice one. Nice one. Um, Man, I can't believe how fast the show is going. We only got about 10 more minutes. I'm thinking we might have some, some extra time I'll here. I, can I can I just um, chip in? I want I want people to like this video. So if you're watching this video now, please like it because we just need to you know we need to kind of gauge how many people are watching and and obviously whether you like the show because you know there's no point us doing the shows if if there's not people watching or they, you don't like it. So like the video um, and also make sure that you comment because uh, we can see your comments and we might be able to come back to those comments. Um, later on. Likewise, um, you can maybe comment um, or send a tweet to me or Jared. Uh, Jared, you just want to give your Twitter uh, handle so people can do that? Sure. I'm uh, I'm at Jared Months on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, unfortunately, I can't put it up on screen because Google Plus doesn't have the fan pages allowed to do that yet through some lower third thing. Yeah, anyway, and I'm, got, at, I'm, at, I'm at Jared Months. Yeah, and mine's at STR Skill School. STR Skill School. But if you listen, if you if you tweet us now, then we'll try and answer some of your tweets live on the show. All right. All right, and uh, let's let's give a shout out to YouTuber. Um, let me pull it up in the comments here. YouTuber L I V A R E N says, "I train with a mini ball in the house. LOL. Broken a lot of furniture though." <laughs> 
do not break any of your parents' furniture in their house kicking footballs around. All right, but uh, love the love the effort. Steve, you ever broke anything with a football growing up? Oh, plenty. Um, I, I don't know if you have them in the states, but we have uh, greenhouses. Do you have them? They're like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in the garden, it's like glass little uh, sort of sheds. You know, like um, that, that you can just grow plants in. I, I, Every garden pretty much had a greenhouse, and I must have broken so many greenhouses. <laughs> but it's normally because I'm going to smash the ball. I'm scoring the greatest goal in the world, and it's flying yeah. over my it's flying over my fence because it's yeah. gone in the back of the net. But um, but yeah, like that windows pots, uh, like you say ornaments inside the house. But uh, you know, I've got an eight year old son, and um, sort of, you know, my wife's always saying, you know, don't. Don't let him kick around in the house, and I'm I'm a culprit as well because I'm the one who's uh, <laughs> kicking the ball around in the house, and he's he's probably sitting on the sofa. <laughs> he's like, I saw Daddy do it. I saw Daddy do it. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so when I, when you hear something smash, I'm like, Leo. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, when I was when I was coming up, I, I definitely broke a few things. I remember one time I was about to smoke a volley, and it was going right straight, and it hit the side of my foot and hit our bay window. And I mean, boom, it just cracked the glass. My dad was sitting there in his lazy boy watching TV. He just gave me a look like he was going to kill me. Um, <laughs> and then, like, on the fence, we'd have this, like, wooden fence. And I must have snapped so many boards because um, the way the fence worked, it was, like, all the fence posts like this, and you had a cross beam here and a cross beam here. So the fence part above the cross beam, I would smoke it with a ball, and it would just pop in half. Um, so I definitely put a few holes in the fence. Yeah. But thankfully, my dad was pretty supportive. Um, yeah, he was, he was good. Uh, if, you've ever, if you've ever broken anything, Steve, can you hear me? If, if yeah, I can hear you, man. All right. If you've, ever, uh, if you've ever broken anything, post a comment and let us know what you broke at your house kicking a football around. Um, let... I've also broke my toe kicking a football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll hurt. Um, YouTuber Vado Mexican 100. I broke my window when I was playing outside. Uh, welcome to the club. Um, don't do it on purpose, though. Everyone watching, uh, please try to keep the comments friendly when you're posting comments. We'd appreciate that. YouTuber Josh Canna, give me a shout out. What's up, Josh? Little dad. Um, let's talk about pumping your footballs up correctly, Steve. I, I don't know about you, but I get questions about that. How do you know how how much air pressure should be in my ball? Um, what what do you say to people when they ask that, Steve? Um, yeah, it's difficult because, um, like I said, the, the the balls recommend a certain pressure on the ball. So if you've got a pressure gauge, then it's pretty pretty easy to to work that out. But um, I don't know. I obviously when you've got a football, if it uh, if you can see me there, you know, if you if you compress in too far like that, that's certainly too flat. You know, there's no point having a ball like that. Uh, you know, and and again, you wouldn't want it to be like a boulder. You don't want it to be like a rock. You know, give it just maybe with a little bit, a little bit of give. Um, but also, when you're inflating the ball, um, make sure you moisten the needle beforehand because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to ruin the, you know, ruin the ball. So moisten the ne uh, the needle, and then obviously make sure it's pumped up so you can, it's got a tiny bit of give in it. Nice one. According to FIFA and the laws of the game on my homework last night, I learned that a ball should be pumped up at 8.5 to 15.6 PSI at sea level. So if you're not at sea level, <laughs> good luck to you. I don't know what to do. Then. Um, yeah, just, yeah, just climb. Just, <laughs> if you're not at sea level, you just climb down that mountain, pump your ball up, and go back up. <laughs> And if you're from the New Orleans area like me and you're below sea level, you're really in trouble. You just got to hold the ball up like really high above your head. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'm with, I'm with Steve. I, I like to be able to push the ball in just a little bit. Um, if, if it's pumped up too hard, it feels like a rock. You don't get a good of a feel on it. It's really hard to kick. But when you pump it up just right, you can just push it in just a little bit. Um, that's when the ball really flies off your foot. Let's go back to the comments, Steve. Um, YouTuber LW videos 14 when we asked the question what have you broken uh, well my dad smashed a pot and blamed it on me the old sod ha 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 that's pretty funny <laughs> you probably didn't want your mom yelling at him so unlucky shout, way out, to take... shout out to the dad yep, blaming the kids yep. way to jump on the <laughs> grenade on that one uh, YouTuber that trick shot guy says he broke my shed 
I would love to see a video of breaking a whole entire shed. Um, YouTuber Future Tobin Heath, I did in my mailbox. Uh, YouTuber Li Varen, two light shades, three plant pots, and a glass door. Sound like a Christmas song there. Um, uh, I think I think they need to I think they need to check out our tutorials a bit more, mate. So, so yeah. So once they brush up on their skills, they won't be breaking anything. Yeah. Let's um let's answer a question that YouTuber zero one two seven seven six five four seven nine three asked. Hey there, Jared. What audience is your channel aimed at? Dot dot dot. Sorry for being a geek, but it seems like it's not for me, and I'm sixteen. Um, when we make videos, we think about players ages ten to sixteen. But having said that, we have players that are 50. We have players that are five. Um, personally, I think the channel is for you. I don't, um, you know, we have very basic videos, and we also have extremely advanced videos. Um, Heather O'Reilly from the U.S. Women's National Team once told me she learned a new trick from our videos. So, I personally think the channel's for you. If you know, if you don't really like my style, then you know, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of content for you at age 16. Yeah, I think I think like like you say, mate. With uh, even my channel, um, sometimes people think, "Oh, is it pitched at my ability?" Actually, um, there's something for everyone on both of our channels. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think like yours, there is definitely something for everyone. And if if they kind of think it's too easy, then you know they've got to think, "Well, how can I adapt this to make it harder for myself?" You know, yeah. do I do it faster, or do I do it in a smaller space? You know, and that's gonna you know. So if you're a good player. You know, or an advanced player, and you're thinking, you know, how do I make myself better? Just try and do things quicker or more precise, or it's in smaller areas, and you know, um, and that's going to benefit you. So if you see something on uh, online soccer academy or STR Skill School, you know, and you're thinking, well, is it too easy? Well, try it, and if it's too easy, just adapt it slightly. Yeah. So YouTuber, a whole bunch of numbers there. I hope that answers the question. I really hope uh, you do find some videos you like and you enjoy the videos. Uh, back to what you broken at your house. Last one here, YouTuber Daniel Valdez. I broke three windows in a plant pot. Whoops. Um, <laughs> yep. Be careful on that one. Uh, so, Steve, that's that's pretty much all the content we had to talk about. We're right at the hour mark here. Man, we're like we, we're we flying. Television. This is crazy. If you guys want us, if you guys want us to talk another ten minutes or so, post a comment. We'll continue the show. Uh, another ten minutes or so, then we got to get back to doing is what we do every ten day. more uh, minutes. <laughs> ten more minutes. <laughs> uh, post a comment. Let us know you want to keep talking. Um, what do you think about that red card in the Champions League game, Steve? Oh man, I, you know, I seeing it live, uh, I didn't think it was a red card. I mean, Nani's clearly sort of watch the ball the whole way, try to bring it down on his foot, okay, his foot's high, yes, he's hit the player, I guess in the eyes of the law, like they're like, you know, it's got to be a red card, but I, I, it was debatable whether it was yellow when you see it first hand like that, like, but I don't know, like, what did you think? Um, that's a very good question. I'm going to plea the fifth here because, sadly, I didn't have time to watch it and I haven't seen a clip of it. No, no, I, I don't think, honestly, I, I don't think it was and it completely changed the game as well. Completely yeah. changed the game. I did, I did read some news that Rio Ferdinand, he gave that, like, sarcastic clap to the ref and, and he's not going to be disciplined uh, for no, that. He was right in his face, mate. It's just like this. Recreation was like this. And the good news is the ref didn't even blink. <laughs> oh, man. That must be so scary, being a referee and having Rio Ferdinand clapping in your face like that. I know. He walked, he walked away He walked away, and then he came back and actually shook the ref's hand afterwards. He shook all the hands. Yeah. Whether he said sorry or not, I don't know. But, you know, the emotions are high, though, aren't they? Yeah. When you're watching a football match, emotions are so high, and that has cost them. Yeah, oh. that cost Man United that. So... Yeah, um, big big time. You YouTuber um YouTuber hack till weedy uh says utter rubbish. That's what I think. Uh YouTuber uh, F Winchy Bear, yellow card at most, uh, but it was debatable. Uh YouTuber zero one two seven seven or a lot of numbers guy says uh never or girl, never a red card. Um we got a few people giving us a shout to keep talking another ten minutes. Uh someone's giving us a little dab, YouTube Vado Mexican one hundred. Um, 
What uh, what do you got going on this weekend, Steve? Anything good? Uh, good question. It's Mother's Day on Sunday, so yeah. shout out to all the the, the moms. Mother's <laughs> Day in America moms. too. I don't know. The, I don't know if it's different in. You you you're thinking? <laughs> oh, I am thinking. <laughs> I was like, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> what? My calendar didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, in the UK, in the UK, we have it uh, over here at uh, this time of March. So, um, so we'll be doing something one for my kids' mother, and then uh, you know something for my mum as well. So, is it, is it Mother's Day or Mum's Day? Uh, it's called Mother's Day, but it's a you, mum, mum in England. You say mum, 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 M U M, M U N. Hey, mum, 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 mummy. Mummy. Mum, 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 mum. For those of you just tuning in here, this is live with SDR and OSA. <laughs> We've reached past the hour mark. If you watched two weeks ago show, this is when we get a little bit loopy, a little bit crazy. We start doing goofy stuff. It's probably also when all our viewership goes down, or maybe it goes up and we finally get entertaining. I don't really know. It's um, probably the best bit. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I just say, uh, sorry, mate, can I just have quick shout out for this ball that I've got here. Um, this ball here is a, a street football, Pana football. So if anyone knows much about the, the Dutch sort of street football um, or Pana, um, this this was given to me at a exhibition actually. Um, I'm trying to think the company's name. Oh, it just says Pana, play the street way. I don't even know the company's name, but it's actually made of a rubber um, and it's like, it's like a car tyre. Like rubber, like Charles so, Goodyear. Yeah, Goodyear. I think it was made by Goodyear. This one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Paying patronage might, to it, our founder who never got any money from our company, Charles Goodyear. Uh, just kidding. I don't know if he got money. New or not. school meets old school, right? Yeah. So we got um, so so we got this ball. But the good news about this is when you play on concrete, um, it doesn't it doesn't wear away. It's, it's nice perfect. One. So, nice one. Yeah. Hey, well, uh, YouTuber Side Frost. God, I love that username, by the way. I want to stick that on a T-shirt. Uh, he's or he or she is going to the DC United home opener, which is awesome. Uh, really cool. DC United's an MLS team, and also YouTuber Side Fries. Guess what? I will be in DC on Monday. I fly in on Monday. I'm doing Soccer Walk in DC. I'm starting a Soccer Walk in America tour. I leave on Monday, so I'll be in DC a few days. I'm going to be doing some juggling with DC United players, Washington Spirit players. Lori Lindsay from the women's national team will be there. And also, we're trying to organize a meetup where soccer players in the area can come out and juggle with me in the video. So if you want to be in the Soccer Walk in D.C. video, YouTube Side Fries, hit me up, send me a message. I'll send you information of where we're going to be. Come out and juggle with me. Um, Steve, I'm pretty pumped about this, man. I know I've told you about it, but I'm Soccer Walk in America, 15 cities, 45 days, and it's all to... Uh, fight malaria and encourage players to juggle to save lives in our OSA World Juggle-a-thon on April 25th, which by the way, Steve, you're participating in that. That's you right, excited? man. Yeah, I'm excited. Like, like I said, I'm happy to be a part of it. And like I say, if it can save some lives too, um, it's certainly for a well, you know, a worthy cause. But man, it, it's going to be a great experience for you as well, like meeting everyone and, and like I say, um, you know, bigging up the charity and, and just making sure that you, you you know can raise as much funds as you can. But you've got hopefully some very powerful people that can help you do that. And and like like you say, getting the freestyle footballers involved. And you know, I've certainly behind the scenes been trying to sort of hook you up with a couple of people um, that, that that can take part. So as I said, um, you know, good luck to you know, good luck for everything, mate. You know, I sort of wish you the best. I wish I could actually be out there with you, like on, on at least one of the tours. But obviously. So far away here, aren't we? But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna soccer walk London one day, Steve. I'm gonna soccer. Yeah, walk that'd you, be you, cool, man. Yeah, YouTuber Phoenix three twenty four says, Jared, are you gonna be in New York? Yes, I'm gonna be in New York. Hopefully, there won't be a snowstorm when I'm there. Um, I'm going to fifteen <laughs> cities: uh, DC, Seattle, Dallas, Houston, Philly, New York, Boston, Columbus, Chicago, Kansas City, Portland, Denver. Salt Lake City, San Francisco, and finishing up in Los Angeles. And the Soccer Walk in L.A. is going to have a very, very big surprise to it. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Hunting in Park 7 says, I saw someone with your jersey at a union game. Well, that's cool. Um, Steve, what, uh, 
we got here David R.J. Beckham, YouTuber David R.J. Beckham23 asking, uh, Jared, can you tell a funny story about your football career? Steve, why don't you start with like a funny story on your football career or something goofy with your teammates, and then I'll throw in a funny story. Yeah, um, training. I used to dread my birthday every training session in the academy year, later years. So we're talking uh, 16 to 19 years old. Like every time it was your birthday, you'd get the worst treatment in the world ever. And you're just waiting for it. You know it's going to happen. You know you're going to get ambushed by everybody. So it's kind of like training's happening, great training session. You walk in back to the changing rooms and it's like, where are they all gone? Where are they? So, you, so you're walking down and then all of a sudden you just see them come out at you. And there's no point even running away because they're going to catch you eventually. So it's like, hit me. And they're chucking flour at you, Tabasco sauce, eggs, like everything. And, it's, and, and you've, got your, you've got your training kit on. And at the time, unfortunately, I managed to have a bag with me, my training bag. Don't know why I had it out with me. But that got absolutely covered in everything. And I think... I think it still had like egg stains and stuff on it, like <laughs> years later. <laughs> so yeah, so the uh, so the tradition was when it was your birthday, you used to get absolutely stitched up. And if yeah. you don't know what stitched up means, that is pretty much it. You get <laughs> you get bad treatment. Nice one. Um, I'll go with I'll go. Well, when I was in college, my English teammates we used to play a ton of jokes on each other. Um, so there's always some funny stories there. In my pro career. Um, I'll give you two funny stories. They weren't really funny at the time, but now they're definitely really funny. So the assistant coach at the fire, this guy, Dennis Hamlet, real intense guy, sort of liked me, sort of didn't. I don't really know. Anyway, it was kind of like you didn't want to mess up around him, that's for sure. So I'm hitting the ball, pinging it around with my friends, and I ping a ball, and it hits him square in the private area. And he goes down, and he just looks at me like he's going to kill me. And everyone's just kind of like pointing and laughing, and I was in deep trouble. Um, and then another time, uh, Chicago Fire was playing DC United, actually. Shout out to YouTube Side Fries. Um, in Chicago, and there were some people from Louisiana there that I'd never met before. And they were asking me if, if I could come sign an autograph and take a picture after the game. And I was like, yeah, of course. So they told me what section they were sitting in. After the game, I run over there. I surprise them. I had an autographed team jersey. Everyone on the fire signed this jersey. I run over to the fans. I completely forgot about the fact that when you run to fans with a jersey, everyone is going crazy for you. So there I am trying not to look at anyone in the eyes, trying to find the people that I came to give the jersey to. Everyone's shouting for the jersey. And the people that I came to give the jersey to are actually wearing D.C. United jerseys. And I go to give it to them, and everyone in the crowd is yelling at me. And I'm yelling at the people, like, what are you doing? Are you trying to get me killed here? So they quickly <laughs> take off the DC United jerseys and put on the fire jerseys they bought. And um, anyway, I gave them the jersey. It was kind of funny at the time. Uh, nah, good man. All right. Mate, it, mate this, this, this hangout is flown by. It is flying, man. I'm having such a good time. Uh, oh, that's why, good. Don't we, why don't we go back to the comments? Let's just... Let's do let's do a little trash talk between us here, Steve. YouTuber Miguel Zapata, I'd like to see a one v one match with you with y'all guys. Who do you think would win? Uh, post uh, a comment if you think it'd be Steve or me. Uh, we may have to do a wedges poll on that one day, Steve, when we do a collab video <laughs> next. What do you What do you think, yeah. Steve? What do you think? I don't know if we could take each other too serious out there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to bust you up, mate. It's it's too we're too good friends now. I can't I, we can't we can't do no we can't do no damage on each other there. Like it could get ugly. <laughs> we do like we do like a post video of it, and you and I are like we both rolled our ankles and we're all bruised up. No, I'm the top YouTuber. No, I'm the top YouTuber. Um, I'm the man. <laughs> I've seen a lot of your videos. You're pretty good. I'd be pretty nervous. I'd much rather play on your team. Yeah, but um, yeah, but you, you, you have to, you have defending videos, and I don't, so that could come in handy. Yeah, that's true. You may have to watch some of my defending videos before we play against each other, but then that may be counterproductive to me beating you. So maybe I wouldn't <laughs> do that. Maybe I just like all of a sudden remove like all the videos that would help you win against me, and then bring them Jared, back after. after Jared, I think all your I think all your hardcore fans are supporting you. Well, no, the, there's, the a, there's a I've only seen a few Jareds and one Steve. Three Jareds to you one Steve. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm losing. <laughs> Three to one. All right, let's go ahead and end the show right now before any uh, any more Steve shouts come in. Because yeah, <laughs> so, thanks everyone for watching the show. So. Steve, 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 Steve. <laughs> Gary wins hands down. Three one. Thank you very much. Uh, you owe me fifty pounds. All right. Um, so Steve, let's let one of the YouTubers. I forget who it was. Um, they asked kind of kind of what's next. What do you got coming next? Anything big? What's your next video? Any anything you want to talk about before we start wrapping the show up? Yeah, I'm just gonna like I said, I'm gonna give another shout out to uh, Kevin Carpenter. He's the K. Uh, let me get his name right. KC Golf Show. Um, he's a golf freestyler, so it's a joint golf and football video. So soccer for those who obviously <laughs> are not from England. Um, yeah, no, no, uh, golf, golf and football meets some great. Trick shots, amazing. Uh, he does amazing things on a unicycle and a, a gym ball, um, juggling juggling a, a golf ball. It's so tricky and smashing the ball down the fairway is like unreal. Like after juggling, like it's crazy. But um, but we do some synchronized juggling and other tricks. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Nice one. And uh, I'm gonna just reiterate the Soccer Walk in America tour I'm doing. I'm really pumped. Still going to have tutorials coming out every Monday, training videos every Monday. But we're going to be doing Soccer Walk in America. It's all to promote the OSA World Juggalathon that we run for Nothing But Nets on April 25th. So be on the lookout for that info. 15 cities, 45 days. We're going to do a video in every city. So Soccer Walk in Seattle, for example. I'm going to be juggling around really cool uh, tourists and landmarks. Um, but then also going to try to get some of the Seattle Sounders players in it some of the women's professional players there, and then we're also going to have meetups in every city where youth players can come out and juggle with me in the video. So come out and be in the video. Be on the lookout for that. And then the last video is going to be Soccer Walk in America, and it'll be a combination of all the videos all across the country. We think it's going to be really cool. We're sponsored by Soccer.com. We're sponsored by American Airlines. It's all, this other company called Aptitude. They make these really cool shirts. Um, they're sponsoring us. We're really pumped. Um, the other thing I want to give a shout out to real quick, Steve, I know we're rambling on here. Um, That's right. These Believe in It shirts, a lot of people have been asking to buy one of these for a really long time. We just came out with two high quality athletic style Believe in It shirts, an orange one and a navy blue. They're made by Aptitude. It's like got triple technology in it. They're, the shirts are awesome. Um, but in the next couple of days, we're going to be announcing where you can buy them pre-sale on Kickstarter at kickstarter.com. So you can, you can buy the shirts, you can pre-order them, you can also get special rewards. It's going to be really cool, so be on the lookout for that. And I'm out of breath. <laughs> Steve, why don't, you, why don't you tell us who, who the winner is of your, of your soccer ball? All right, okay. okay. Ran randomly, um, I went onto my Google um, Plus page, um, and this hopefully this person watches. I will try and reach out to them. Um, if I can, but um, if you're listening to this, Charlie, wait, hold on, hold on. Sorry, Steve, hold on. Tell, tell for those of you that are just tuning in here, Steve is giving away a miter football. Uh, earlier, we told you to go to his Google Plus page and follow it. Now he's picking a winner for the ball. He's been doing a contest for a bit. He's announcing the winner. That's right. So the Google Plus ball uh, is for Charlie Twyman uh, on Google Plus. So Charlie. Uh, congratulations! Um, I'll reach out to you, and I'll get you to give me your address um, after I've uh, hooked up with you uh, through Google Plus, and I'll get this ball shipped out to you um, as soon as possible. Um, there are two more chances to win as well. Um, so if you follow me on Twitter, I still haven't given the ball away on Twitter yet. So if you um, if you follow me on Twitter at STR Skill School. Um, all you have to do is you have to say why you like my videos, and then I'll give that ball away. And the same as Facebook, facebook.com forward slash STR Skill School. Say why you like my videos, and then I'll select a winner as soon as I can. It will be quite soon. Nice one. All right, we'll be sure and uh, do that so you can win a new miter ball. It's pretty awesome. Congrats to the winner there. So let's well done, go. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up, Steve. This has been this has been a ton of fun. I'm all excited. I got a new webcam. I'm trying to look as good as you on camera because you always right. have a better webcam. Uh, new webcam is not going to do that, mate. New webcam. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, we're uh, it, it's been a ton of fun. I love uh, love these hangouts. They're a good time. For those of you that don't know, we do live with STR and OSA every other Friday. So not this Friday, but next Friday. 
We'll be doing this again. We'll be doing it on Steve's channel. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We do it at 4 p.m. Eastern time. While I'm on the Soccer Walk in America tour, by the way, I'll also be doing live interviews with pro players along the way. So next week, Lori Lindsay from the women's national team will be on live with me. Um, but live with SDR and OSA every two weeks. Tune in, check it out, hang out with us. It's fun. Steve, tell everyone where they can find you and let's wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, they can find me, um, STR Skill School, um, on, on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Google Plus. So Google Plus is um, plus STR Skill School and the rest are forward slash uh, STR Skill School. And yourself, mate, don't forget yourself. All right, I won't, I won't. Uh, you can find me, I'm at Jared Munts on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all over the place. Uh, you also go to onlinesoccericademy.com and you can sign up for free and track your game reviews and do progress and uh, at youtube.com slash onlinesoccericademy. We do training videos every Monday. Um, Steve, it's been real. A little dap to you. I'm going to miss Mate, you. Mate, great. Like I said, I think in two weeks' time we're going to have a lot of talk to talk about. There's a big uh, YouTube collaboration happening with football um, a couple of days before, I think, uh, in London. So uh, I'll be able to talk about that. So yes. make sure that people do subscribe to both of our channels because I said the next one's going to be on my channel. And for you, man, like good luck with everything you're you're doing. Like, I wish I was there. <laughs> Cheers, Steve. Cheers. Um, all right, everyone, post a comment. Let us know what you think our topic should be for the next show. Uh, we've already done boots. We've already done footballs. What should we do next? Post a comment. Let us know. It's been great. Y'all have a great weekend. Keep living the dream, Steve. Cheers, brother. Little dot. Little dot. Well done. All right. See you later, man. Cheers.